Hello grade 8 math leads. Our topic for today is factoring general trinomials, specifically a trinomial of the form ax squared plus minus bx plus minus c, where a is equal to 1. Well, generally, in factoring general trinomials like this, it is important to remember that a positive constant term denoted by um, denoted by C here tells us to look for two numbers with the same sign and the sign of the coefficient of the middle term denoted by B tells whether the signs of the two numbers are either positive or negative and to guide us in factoring general tri trinomials, let's remember the following key steps. The first step is we're going to list all pairs of integers whose product is C. Okay, so we're going to list all pairs of integers whose product is C. Suppose the given trinomial is x squared plus 11x plus 18. So first step, we're going to list all pairs of integers whose product is c. And from the given, c is equal to 18. That means we're going to look for two integers whose product is 18. And the possible pairs are 1 and 18 another one is 3 and 6 and the last one is 2 and 9 so these are the pairs of integers whose product is 18 after this we're going to proceed to step 2 and step 2 we're going to choose a pair m and n whose sum is b that is m plus minus n is equal to B. From the list of possible pairs, we're going to choose two numbers such that m plus minus n is equal to b. Or when the two numbers are added or subtracted, the result is b. Let's remember that when c is positive, the two numbers are either both positive or both negative. And the sign of the coefficient of the middle term tells whether the signs of the two numbers are either positive or negative. For better understanding, let's consider again the trinomial x squared plus 11x plus 18. C here is positive, which is positive 18. This gives us clue that the factors are either both positive or both negative. Now, let's look at the numerical coefficient of the middle term. It's positive 11. This means that both numbers are positive. Now, let's see which pairs would give a sum of 11 when added. So the two integers, let's denote this as m and we have here n. Since both numbers are positive, therefore we have m plus n equal to b. So again, we're going to or we are looking for a pair of integers m and n whose sum is b. And here we are looking for two integers whose sum is 11 or factors of 18 that when added is 11 and the first pair here is if we're going to add 1 plus 18 the result is 19 and obviously this is wrong the second one we have 3 and 6 when added the sum is 9 and obviously this is not what we are looking for right and the last one here 2 plus 9 is equal to 11, which is obviously, this is correct, right? So, the two integers that satisfies the condition is 2 and 9, okay? So, 2 and 9, the product is 18, and the sum is equal to 11. Now, the question now is, how are we going to write the factor of x squared plus 11x plus 18? So, Let's proceed to step 
3. In step 3, the factor form of the trinomial of the form ax squared plus bx plus c is given by the quantity x plus minus m times the quantity x plus minus n. And earlier, we discussed that since 18 is positive and the middle term is also positive, this means that both numbers are positive. Therefore, the factor of the trinomial x squared plus 11x plus 18 will be the quantity x plus 2 times the quantity x plus 9. Okay, so that's it. However, there is always a necessity to check whether we have the correct factor for the given trinomial. And that is step four. We're going to verify whether the factor satisfies the given trinomial. So all we need to do is to multiply the two binomials here if it gives x squared plus 11x plus 18 when multiplied. So we're going to multiply x times x. We have x squared. The next one is this one plus x times 9 we have 9x plus we have 2 times x we have 2x and then plus 2 times 9 we have 18 then let's simplify this further by combining like terms we have x squared plus 9x plus 2x so we have 11x and plus 18 as we can see the the factor the quantity x plus 2 times the quantity x plus 9 satisfies the trinomial x squared plus 11x plus 18 okay so let us not forget that after forming the factor we have to check whether it satisfies the trinomial and we should also bear in mind that not all trinomials are factorable so in the event that a trinomial cannot be factored by any means or there are no such integers m and n such that m plus minus n is equal to b the trinomial cannot be factored and it's said to be a prime or a prime polynomial okay so that's it so there are only five simple steps on how to factor a trinomial of the form ax squared plus bx plus minus bx plus minus c where a is equal to one so again the first step is we're going to list all pairs of integers whose product is C. And the second step is we're going to choose a pair M and N whose sum or difference is B. And the third step, we're going to write the factor in the form X plus minus M or the quantity X plus minus M times the quantity X plus minus M. N. And step four, we're going to verify the answer, whether we have the correct factor or not. And lastly, step five, we should not forget that not all trinomials can be factored. If that's the case, we can simply say that the trinomial is a prime polynomial. That's it. Now, for better understanding, let's have some more examples. So we have here, number one, factor x squared plus 5x plus 6. Again, let's remember the first step. We're going to list all pairs of integers whose product is c. And c here is equal to 6. And I think there are only two pairs of numbers that when multiplied, the product is 6. The first one is 1 times 6 and the second one is 2 times 3. So these are the pairs of integers m and n that, that when multiplied will give us 6. And the second step is we're going to choose a pair of m and n whose sum or difference is the middle term which is b. In this example, the middle term is positive 5. Recall that when c is positive and the middle term is also positive, that means both integers or both numbers are positive. So let's check. We're going to add the two integers to find out which of the two pairs will give us 5. 
when added. So we have 1 plus 6 is equal to 7. And obviously, this is wrong. And 1 or 2 plus 3 is equal to 5, which is correct. That means 2 integers whose product is 6 and whose sum is 5 are the numbers 2 and 3. And let's proceed to the third step. We're going now to express the answer in the form x plus or the quantity x plus 2 times the quantity x plus 3. So that's step 3. Then step 4, verify the answer whether we have the correct factor for the given trinomial. So let's multiply it back. We have x times x, we have x squared, and the middle term here is simply the sum of the product of the inner and the outer terms. So we have 2 times x, we have 2x, and the outer terms, x times 3, we have 3x, when added is 5x. That means we have 5x here. And of course, the last term here, we have 2 times 3 is equal to 6. So we have the correct factor for the trinomial x squared plus 5x plus 6, which is the quantity x plus 2 times the quantity x plus 3. So that's for number 1. Let's have another example. Factor y squared minus 6y plus 5. Um, before we answer number 2, let's erase first uh, the notation we have here. If you want to copy this, uh, this one, you may actually pause the video and then copy. So let's have number 2. So given y squared minus 6y plus 5. Again, step 1. List all pairs of integers whose product is 5. And luckily, 5 is a prime number and there is only one pair of integer that satisfies this condition. We only have 1 and then 5. Okay? 1 and 5. Now, let's consider the middle term. The middle term here is negative. So recall that when 5 or C is positive, that means there are two possibilities. Either both numbers are positive or both numbers are negative. That is why we need to consider the middle term. And the middle term here is negative 6. That means both numbers are negative. So if we're going to add negative 1 plus negative 5, or we can simply say that negative 1 minus 5 is equal to negative 6. Okay, so that's quite easy since there is only one possible pair of integers that satisfies the condition. Now, step three, we're going to express or write the factor in the form. In this case, the variable is y. Okay, it's no longer x. So we should be very careful when um, writing the factors. We might end up copying the examples that we are following so always check so the factors are the quantity y minus 1 times the quantity y minus 5 okay that's it you might ask 
can we write the factor as the quantity y minus 5 times the quantity y minus 1 are both um, both factors correct well the answer is yes remember that multiplication is commutative at the same time associative that means the order of the multiplicands does not affect the product just like multiplying two numbers two times four is equal to four times two the answer is equal to eight as you can see so the order of the multiplicands does not affect the product same with addition so it doesn't matter if we write the factor the quantity y minus 1 first followed by the quantity y minus 5 or the quantity y minus 5 times the quantity y minus 1 both are correct okay so we are done with step 3 and step 4 we're going to verify whether we have the correct factor so let's check the first term we have here y times y of course we have y squared and the middle term again is simply the sum of the product of the outer and the inner terms so we have here negative y times y negative 5 times y rather so we have negative 5y and we have here the outer terms we have y times negative 1 so we have negative y when added we have negative 6y which is correct here and the last term is negative 5 times negative 1 so we have positive 5 that's it so that's example number two let's have another example so example number three again um, let's make some working space before we answer number three so in number three the last term is 32 here 32 that means we're going to list all possible pairs of integers whose product is 32 so we can use actually factor 3 so that it's quite easy for us to look for the possible factors of the given number which is 32 so we can use 8 and 4 here 8 and 4 and 4 is 2 times 2 and we have here 8 is 2 times 2 times 2 okay so the possible factor or the possible pairs of integers whose product is 32 is if we're going to get to here we have 2 and the remaining is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is 16 okay the next one is 2 times 2 we have 4 and the remaining 3 twos 2 times 2 times 2 is 8 and what else of course we have 1 and 32 1 times 32 so let's not forget um, 1 times the number itself 32 
Okay, so there are three pairs of integers whose product is 32. Now, after which, let's consider the middle term. The middle term here is negative 12. Again, if C is positive and the middle term is negative, that means both number is negative. So we are looking for two integers whose product is 32 and when added or subtracted, the answer is negative 12. Since the middle term is negative, that means both integers here are negative. So we have negative 2 and negative 6. So if we're going to add negative 2 and negative 16, the answer is negative 18. And this is not we are looking for. The second one is negative 4 and negative 8. So negative 4 plus negative 8 is negative 12. Okay, so that means we don't need to check the last one here, which is 1 and 32, since we already have the answer here. So the two integers whose product is 32 and whose um, sum is negative 12 are negative 4 and negative 8. Then the next one is we're going to write uh, uh, we're going to write the two numbers as the factor of the trinomial z squared minus 12z plus 32. So this time the variable the the variable we used is z. So we have here z and then 4. So the quantity z minus 4 times the quantity z minus 8. That's it. Then the next step is to verify whether we have the correct factor for the given trinomial. So again, we have z times z. We have z squared, okay, which is correct. And the middle term is simply the sum of the product of the inner and the, of the outer and the inner terms. So we have here negative 4 times z. So we have negative 4z. And we have here z times negative 8. So we have negative 8z. And if we're going to add, so we have negative 12z, which is also correct. And lastly, we have the last terms, negative 4 and negative 8 is positive 32. Okay? So, the factor of z squared minus 12z plus 32 is the quantity x minus 4 times the quantity z minus 8. That's it. And let's have another example. So, in number 4, we have the trinomial a squared plus 8x. Oh, I'm sorry. I think this is a typo error. Uh, this is 8a. 8a plus 15. Okay. So, a squared plus 8a plus 15. Again, um, step 1 is to list all pairs of integers whose product is 15. So we have here 15. Uh, of course, we have one, 1 and 15, 1 times 15. And we have 3 times 5. Then, let's consider the middle term. The middle term is also positive. That means both integers or both numbers are positive. So which of the two pairs will give a sum of 8 when added? So obviously, we have 3 and 5. Okay? 
So we have 3n5 here, which is 8. Then the factors are in the form a quantity a plus 3 times the quantity a plus 5. And verify. So we have a times a, we have a squared. And 3 times a, we have 3a. And a times 5 here, we have 5a. And 3a plus 5a is 8a. So the middle term is 8a. And the last term is 3 times 5. We have 15. Therefore, the factor of a squared plus 8a plus 15 is the quantity a plus 3 times the quantity a plus 5. Supposing um, we did not change the variable x here. Supposing the trinomial is a squared plus 8x plus 15. Since there is no instance or it's impossible to have 8x as the middle term. So that means the trinomial cannot be factored. So if that's the case, the answer here is prime polynomial. Okay? Next, let's have number 5. Okay, let's erase first. Number 5, we have... <clears throat> Factor p squared minus 14p plus 48. Again, we're going to list all pairs of integers whose product is c. So, c here is equal to 48. So, 48. Okay. So, we could have 6 and 8 here. And express 6 as product of primes further we have 2 and 3 and we have here 2 times 2 times 2 8 <clears throat> so out of these prime numbers we're going to look for um, pairs of integers whose product is 48 so we have um, 1 times 48, of course. So 1 times 48. The next one is, we have here 2. And then 3 times 2, 6 times 2, 12 times 2, we have 24. So 2 and 24. Then we have 2 times 3, we have 6. And then we have 8. And we have here um, 2 times 3, 6 times 2, um, 12 times times 4. Sorry, okay? 12 and 4, okay? So that means there, there are 4 pairs of integers whose product is 48. 1 times 48, 2 times 24, 6 times 8. And 12 times 4. Or if you are quite familiar with the multiplication table, you can easily find the factor of the given number that when added is the, equal to the middle term. And we need not to list down all the possible pairs of integers here. But in this example, I want to show you how um, do we look for pairs of integers that will satisfy the given condition or whose product is um, 48. Okay? Then, after listing all the possible pairs of integers whose product is 48, we're going to consider the middle term, which is negative 14. So, the last term is positive and the middle term is negative. That means both factors are negative. So, 
we're going to look for pairs of integers that when added is equal to negative 14. So if this is negative 1 and this is negative 48, when added is equal to negative 49. And obviously, it's not what we are looking for. And then 2 times 20, uh, 2, negative 2 plus negative 24 is negative 26, okay. which is wrong. And the third one, we have negative 6 and negative 8. So we have here negative 14, which is correct. And since we already found the two integers whose sum is negative 14, so I think it's no longer necessary to, to check the remaining pair of integer here. Integers, rather. So the number, the two integers or numbers that satisfy the condition whose product is 48 and whose sum is negative 14 are negative 6 and negative 8. And step 3, write the two numbers as factor of the trinomial p squared minus 14p plus 48. So in number 5, the variable is p so that means we're going to use p here quantity p minus 6 times the quantity p minus 8 then step 4 verify the factor so we have p times p we have p squared negative 6 times p so we have negative 6p and we have here p times negative 8 so we have negative 8p when added we have negative 14p okay which is correct here and the last term negative 6 times negative 8 we have negative 48 so the factor is correct. The quantity p minus 6 um, times the quantity p minus 8. Okay, so let's have our next example. Factor x squared minus 9x plus 10. So the last term here is negative 10. Okay. Number 6 is different from the previous examples that we had discussed observe that the last term here is negative okay so this gives us clue that one of the factors is negative okay again observe that the last term here is negative 10 so that means one of the factors or one of the integers or numbers is negative so we're going to list all pairs of integers whose product is 10 so we have 10 we have um, 2 and 5 and we have 1 and 10 right we have 1 and 10 so Again, the last term is negative. That means one of the factors or one of the numbers is negative. Now, let's consider the middle term. The middle term is negative, negative 9. If the middle term is negative, that means the larger number is negative. If the middle term is positive, the larger number is negative positive now let's go back to the pairs of integers that we have listed earlier so we have 2 and 5 1 and 10 we know that one of these numbers is either positive or negative since ne since the middle term is negative that means the larger number is negative so between 2 and 5 
2 is positive and 5 is negative. And between 1 and 10, 1 is positive and 10 is negative. So, if we're going to add 2 plus negative 5 or 2 minus 5, the answer is negative 3, which is wrong. And the last one, we have 1 minus 10 is negative 9, which is correct. Okay? That means the two integers that satisfy the condition are 1 and negative 10. And next step, we're going to write the factor in the form the quantity x plus 1 since 1 is positive times the quantity x minus 10 since 10 is negative. Next is verify the factor. So x times x, we have x squared, which is correct. Then check the middle term. We have 1 times x, we have x. And 1 times negative 10 is negative 10x. So we have 10 minus 10x. The answer is negative 9x, which is also correct. And 1 times negative 10 is negative 10. Therefore, the factor of x squared minus 9x minus 10 is the quantity x plus 1 times the quantity x minus 10. Okay, that's it for number 6. Then, let's have number 7. For number 7, the same with number 6. So the last term here is negative 30. Okay, that means we're going to list all pairs of integers whose product is 30. And we have 1 times 30. We have 2 times 15. We have 5 and 6. Okay. Do we have more? I think there are only three possible pairs. So 1 times 30, 2 times 15, and 5 times 6. Then, out of these pairs, we're going to look for factors of 30 that when added or subtracted, the result is the middle term here. The middle term here is negative 1. Okay? Again, 30 here is negative. That means one of the numbers is negative. And look at the middle term here. The middle term is also negative. That means the larger number is negative. So between 1 and 30, 30 is negative. Between 2 and 15, 15 is negative. And between 5 and 6, 6 is negative. So let's see. So we have 1 minus 30 is negative 29. This is not the 1. And the second one is 2 minus 15. So we have here negative 13. Okay? Not this one. And the last one is 5 minus 6, which is negative 1. So, we have 5 and negative 6. Then, write the factor in the form k plus 5 times the quantity k minus 6 after which 
verify the answer. So we have here k times k, we have k squared, and 5 times k, we have 5k, and k times negative 6 is negative 6k. When added, we have negative, added or subtracted, we have negative k, okay, which is correct here. And lastly, we have 5 times negative 6, we have negative 30. Okay, that's it for number 7. Then, let's have number 8. So, number 8, we have 36. So, we're list down again all possible pairs of integers whose product is 36. So, 36, so let's get the most basic one, um, 1 and 36, and we have here 6 and 6, we have 2 and 3, and another 2 and 3. So, that means if we're going to get 2, we have 3 times 2, 6 times 3 we have um, 18 right so 2 and 18 another one is if we're going to get 2 and 3 so we have 6 and another 6 6 times 6 another one is um, 2 times 3 6 times 2 we have 12 and 3 and the last one is uh, 2 and 2 here so we have 4 and 9 so there are five possible pairs of integers that satisfies the condition whose product is 36 okay next let's consider the middle term the middle term is positive 9 so the last term is negative while the middle term is positive that means the larger number is positive and between 1 and 36 so 1 is negative 2 and 18 2 is negative and 6 and 6 so well either one of either one of them is negative and 12 and 3 this is negative 4 and 9 so this is negative then let's try to um add or subtract so negative 1 plus 36 the answer is positive 35 so this does not satisfy the condition then negative 2 plus 18 so we have 16 again this is not what we are looking for and negative 6 plus 6 we have 0 obviously this is not we are looking for as well and 12 minus 3 so the answer here is positive 9 or simply 9 which is correct so we don't need to check negative 4 and 9 anymore so the two integers that satisfy the condition is 12 and negative 3 then let's write the factor in the form um, u plus 12 times the quantity u minus 3 then let's verify the answer so we have u times u we have u squared and 12 times u is 12u here and u times negative 3 is negative 3 
u. So 12u minus 3u is 9u, which is correct. And 12 times negative 3 is negative 36. Okay? So that's for number 8. Next, let's have number 9. But let's erase the annotation. So number 9, um, factor d to the 6th minus 3d cubed minus 40. So the last term here is negative 40. So negative 40. So that means the last term is negative. That means one of the numbers is negative. And the middle term is negative. That means the larger number is negative. So we have here 40. So we have 5 and 8. And of course, 8 can be expressed as 2 times 2 times 2. Okay? So the possible pairs are... So um, we have 1 times 40. And we have 5 times 8. What else? We have 5 times 10 uh, 10 and 4 I mean 10 and 4 40 and we have um, 5 times 2 times 2 we have 20 20 and 2 okay that's it next is to check which of the listed factors will satisfy the middle term. So we are going to look for um, factors of 40 that when added or subtracted, the result is negative 3. Again, the middle term is negative. That means the larger number is negative. And between 1 and 40, so 40 is negative. Between 5 and 8, 8 is negative. Between 10 and 4, 10 is negative. And between 20 and 2, 20 is negative. Okay? So 1 minus 40 is negative 39. So automatically, this is out of the choices. 5 minus 3, uh, 5 minus 8 rather, the answer is negative 3. Okay? So I think we already found the two integers whose sum or difference is negative 3. So we don't need to check negative 10 and 4 and negative 20 and 2 anymore. So it's 5 and negative 8. Then write the factor in the form d observe that the exponent of the first term is d to the sixth that means this is a perfect square so if we're going to divide it by two we have here d cubed the first term is d cubed and d cubed here so that when we multiply d cubed times d cubed, the answer is d to the sixth. Recall that when we multiply terms with the same base, we simply add the exponent, the product rule. Therefore, we have d cubed plus 5 times the quantity d cubed minus 8. That's it. Then, verify. We have d cubed times d cubed. We have d to the 6th. Correct. And 5 times d cubed. We have 5 d cubed. And we have here d cubed minus times negative 8. So we have negative 8 
d cubed. So 5 minus 8 is negative 3 d cubed, which is correct. And 5 times negative 8 is negative 40. Okay? So the factor of d to the 6th minus 3 d cubed minus 40 is equal to the quantity d cubed plus 5 times the quantity d cubed minus 8. And we have example number 10. I think this is the last example for this topic. So let's erase the writings first. Okay, so for number 10, we have m to the 4th minus 14m squared plus 45. So, the last term is 45. That means uh, the factors or the, the integers whose product is 45 are we have 1 and 45 so we have here 45 let's see so that it's easier for us to find all the possible um, factors of 45 so we have 9 and 5 and we have 3 and 3 so 3 if we're going to get 3, so the remaining 3 and 5, so we have 15. Then, 3 times 3, we have 9 and 5. Okay, I think these are all the possible pairs of integers whose product is 45. So we have 1 and 45, 3 and 15 and 9 and 5 then let's consider the middle term so the last term is positive and the middle term is negative that means both numbers are negative so if we have negative 1 and negative 45 the answer here is negative 46 okay so This is not um, the correct factors. Next is 3 and 15. Negative 3 and negative 15, so we have negative 18. So this is also not we are not we are not what we are looking for. And only one left negative 9 and negative 5 and the answer is negative 14 okay. so that means the, the two the two integers that satisfy the condition is negative 5 and negative 9 then write the factor in the form um, m so the first term is m to the fourth that means the first term is m squared minus 5 times the quantity m squared um, m squared minus 9 okay then next step check or verify so we have m times m squared times m squared. We have m to the fourth. And we have here negative five negative five times m squared is negative five m squared. Then the outer is m squared times negative nine is negative nine m squared. So we have here negative fourteen m squared so correct and negative 5 times negative 9 is positive 45 so the factor of m to the fourth minus 14 m squared plus 45 is the quantity m squared minus 5 times the quantity 
m squared minus 9. So, that's it. So, I, hopefully, you learned something on how to factor um, general trinomial of the form ax squared plus minus bx plus minus c, where a is equal to 1. And for our next video, we are going to discuss uh, factoring trinomial of the form ax squared plus minus b um, bx plus minus c. Uh, this is bx, I'm sorry. Plus minus c, where a is not equal to 1. Okay? Not equal to 1. So the examples we have discussed are type of trinomials where a is equal to 1. And the next um, lesson or topic that we're going to discuss is the same trinomial, but a is not equal to 1. Okay, that's it for now. So hopefully, you learned on how to, you learned from our discussion on how to factor uh, the, a general the general trinomial of the form ax squared plus minus bx plus minus c, where a is equal to 1. See you next time, class.